Carl Kratz here. I'm coming to you from the South Carolina Low Country, and today I'd like to talk about why it may not make sense to move to Hilton Head Island. Now, if you like what you're hearing today, please give me a thumbs up, and if you want to see more content, please subscribe. Now, let's get to it. Hurricanes, they're scary, I get that, but we're in a unique situation here. The uh, Gulf Stream is actually between 80 miles and 100 miles off the coast, which is bad for fishing, takes more diesel fuel to get out there to catch the fish. But it's good for us because what happens is most of the time, the storms actually track along the warm water and either they end up beforehand hitting the Florida coast, dissipating on land, and by the time they get to us, they're a tropical storm, just a minor inconvenience or they track up the coastline and let's say hit Charleston, the Outer Banks, or just keep going farther up the coast. We're also located in a little, uh, nook, if you, if you look at the coastline. I've heard it referred to as Heaven's Nook, but in any case, that's another reason why we're a little bit more protected than most areas. Now let's talk a little bit more about weather. It does get hot here, I'm not gonna lie, especially in June, July, and August. But I will say that I've heard that humidity is good for your skin, and I'm actually 100 years old. Just kidding, it gets hot. But personally, I would rather sweat than shovel snow. The next thing is, you know, the bugs don't really die down here. I mean, just because of the mild winters. And I can remember years ago, I was out on my porch and I saw a mosquito in December. And I just start laughing, like, are you kidding me? But here's the thing, I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and I'll take that trade off anytime. You know, let's talk about food for a second. People have different dietary needs. My wife's vegan, so she's very particular. And we do have some good options as far as grocery stores, Whole Foods, Fresh Market, Publix, Kroger, Food Lion, Walmart, to mention most of them and shifting talking about restaurants you know i think the restaurants here are good but i've heard people say they're just okay if you're a real foodie and are looking for an elevated level of cuisine you might want to consider charleston honestly i think they have a great food scene there but also keep in mind what you're two and a half hours from charleston from hilton head there's also savannah which i don't think is as good as charleston but but they do have good food and you're talking under an hour. It's not that far to have some other options. I really do like the relaxed lifestyle here. If you're like at Myrtle Beach or up and down the Florida coast and even in Georgia somewhat, there are more of these high rises and it's just not as relaxed to me. Here we have one 10 story building with the Marriott Grand Ocean, then it drops down to six stories with like the Seacrest, the Westin, a lot nicer, I think. Next, most of the homes in here are in gated communities, and all these communities have different personalities and characteristics just like anywhere you go in the country. The fees vary, let's say anywhere from 1100 a year to north of $20,000 a year. And those costs are just gonna depend on what you're looking for. Do you want a private golf course? Do you need a place to park your yacht? And to or golf or tennis, pickleball? Uh, do you need a country club? Do you need a spa? You know, so it's just about finding the right fit for you. And I guess another thing to keep in mind too is some of these places have a lot more tourists. So if you're trying to stay a little bit more off the beaten path, you might want to consider, let's say, some of the properties on the north end of the island versus the south end of the island. They're, they're more like regular neighborhoods where people live year round or the tourists coming in for vacation. Now, if you're not looking in one of those planned communities, something you need to know about zoning, if you're looking at a property, there's a manufactured home, the odds are it's not going anywhere. You know, if you just keep that in mind, if you think, that that's going to change anytime soon, I would not recommend counting on anything like that because it's probably not going to happen. You know, when I first moved here and I didn't know my way around, it's a little hard to find things. I know with Google now it's a lot easier to find anything, but the signage here is not lit. 
or lit up, you don't have any neon outside. And it's just meant to blend in with nature, which I think is nice, but in the beginning it's a little bit challenging. Now let's talk about schools. South Carolina isn't known for being a scholastic state, but what I will say is that Hilton Head High School is ranked in the top 7% in the nation out of 24,000 other high schools. So if you're thinking about moving your family here and you're thinking I might need to pay for private schooling, you do have some good options here without paying private tuition. And I also would recommend looking at greatschools.org. Uh, don't just take my word for it. Now, if you like walking around, there aren't very many walkable places on Hilton Head. I mean, of course you can walk on the beach. There's just no downtown. You know, they call Caligny Hilton Head's downtown, but you know, there just isn't a downtown. So you're gonna need a car to get there in all likelihood. And along with that, there is very little public transportation. So that would be something, if that's gonna be an issue for you, you do need to know about. Now let's talk about my favorite part of this, real estate. If you're gonna buy a house, on Hilton Head Island. We're gonna start around four or 500,000 now. Today I looked and the cheapest single family home with three bedrooms and two bathrooms was 427,000. And here's the thing, I looked over the past six months and the average priced home that sold was just over 1.2 million and it came with four bedrooms and four bathrooms and it was 2,861 square feet. Prices have gone up a lot, just like everywhere. Now looking at the condos, I looked at two bedroom condos. The average price over the last six months was 427,000 and that was with 1133 on the square footage. Now condos are gonna start 180 right now to get in the door and go up to whatever. You also have to keep in mind how much the fees are gonna run for the regimes to say, starting more like around 300 a month and up to around a grand a month, just to give you an idea. Now, as far as recreation's concerned, of course you have golf, tennis, boating, fishing, biking, hiking, and then of course all the things you would do as a tourist anywhere from dolphin tours to zip lining, movies, theater. We don't have any pro sports close, or at least we don't have any NFL teams, NHL teams, and NBA teams. The closest we would have would be the Savannah Bananas or the newly formed Ghost Pirates over in Savannah as well, new hockey team. If you wanna to travel to see the NFL, for example, the closest would be Jacksonville. So you're talking about two and a half hours by car. Now we do have a little bit of culture here. The Gullah Geechee people have a rich heritage of food, language, and art. I was lucky enough to participate in an authentic dinner with, with some singers and it was inspirational and breathtaking. You know, I'd recommend it to anyone. I think you would really enjoy it. You know, there are all sorts of festivals that are going on here. For example, there's a picture of uh, Wingfest, which just happened. There are other festivals like wine and food, a sip and stroll, grand tasting. You're seeing a theme here, but there are other festivals as well. Now we are in the low country, so I think it's only, it's very important that we talk about flood insurance. You know, if you're buying in sea pines, I don't think there's a property that doesn't require flood insurance if you have a mortgage. And whether you have a mortgage or not, you know, you also have to consider resale. Also, if you have a mortgage and FEMA runs out of money, who knows, being an issue and nobody likes to talk about this, but if insurance is completely privatized, the rates are gonna go through the roof. And it's hap if it's happening to everyone and you can't afford it, you're gonna be in a situation where property values are going down and you need to unload your property. So I just think it's something that you need to know about. Next thing related to insurance is wind and hail. Hilton Head is a barrier island, so wind and hail insurance is more expensive. Now, just to give you a rough number, let's say $1,000 more a year, but you really should talk to 
a local insurance agent or broker, and I can help you with that if that's something that you want to do, just because I think you need to understand the cost. South Carolinians probably think they're better drivers than they are, especially on Hilton Head, because the auto insurance is a little bit higher here. So let's switch to everyone's favorite topic, taxes. The sales tax here is 6%, property taxes. If your property is your primary, you're gonna pay roughly half a percent of the purchase price. And if it's a second home, investment home, a rental, whatever, you're gonna pay approximately one and a half percent of the purchase price. So it's, it's significantly higher the way it's spun is that if you live here, you get a discount and everyone else pays full. But not everybody's used to having to pay taxes in their automobiles, but here you do. And just to give you a rough idea, if you have, let's say, a $45,000 vehicle, I would estimate roughly $650 a year. And, you know, they're just basing that on the value of the vehicle. South Carolina top tax rate is 7%. Now, if you're under the age of 65, you get a $3,000 deduction. If you are over the age of 65, you can get a $15,000 deduction which can be applied to retirement income like 401k, IRA, government, or public pensions. And you are not taxed in the state of South Carolina on Social Security. If you have a military retirement, that you, you can exclude $30,000 of that income. So looking at everything as far as cost of living here, it's approximately 22% higher than the national average. Now I know I'm biased, but I think it's worth it just to live in such a beautiful place. That's my opinion. The natural beauty of Hilton Head and Beaufort County, I think is absolutely spectacular. I mean, looking at the tidal marshes, the rivers, the live oaks, Spanish moss, all the palm trees that dot the landscape, you know, it, it's, it's incredible. And that's not even talking about the Atlantic Ocean. I love going over the Hilton Head Bridge because I usually see a dolphin on a regular basis. And I, I just think it's special. Now crime, not all the numbers are reported because of the, the gated communities. So the stats I have are skewed, but as far as violent crimes are concerned, the chance of that happening is 489 to one versus 185 to one in South Carolina. And as far as property crime is concerned, you're talking one in 47 chances and in the state of South Carolina, one in 36. Even with not getting all the uh, stats reported in the gated communities, I still truly believe that it's a safe place to live. I just wanted to give you the caveat about the stats. No one's from here. It definitely is a melting pot. You're seeing people primarily from New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. I guess my point is with very few people being from here, people are generally open and friendly and they're happy to meet people. And it's a very relaxed and easy going place to live. Now, as far as some quick numbers on getting to places, I've mentioned some of these already, but Savannah is about 45 minutes along with the airport, about the same. If you want to drive to Buford, that is about 50 minutes. and it's Beaufort in North Carolina. Uh, Atlanta, you're talking about five hours. Charlotte, about four hours. Charleston, about two and a half. And Jacksonville, almost three hours to Jacksonville, uh, two and three quarters. Now, what I think is really important and, and probably the biggest takeaway when I talk to people about moving here, the first thing I ask them is, do you have a job? It, hey, it's great if you're retired. It's great if you have a portable job, but if you're moving down here and think you're gonna make the same money you made up in Ohio or New York or whatever, it's probably not gonna happen. Now I know the cost of living here is cheaper, but I just think it's important that you look at the net number so you have a good idea about what to expect. Most of these jobs are coming from either construction, food and beverage, hotel industry. Now with the retirees, there, there are more medical opportunities, but people wanna live here, but the, the jobs are 
definitely a little more scarce, at least the, or the good job, excuse me. If you like this video, you might want to check out a video that I recently did along the similar lines for Bluffton, South Carolina. This is Carl Kratz with Century 21 Diamond Realty. I'm a local broker and realtor. Please give me a call if I can help you. If you have any questions, feel free to pick my brain. You can call, text, email. I also have a link set up, so if you want to schedule either a call or a Zoom meeting, I'm happy to do that. I know you're just trying to figure out what you want to do. And if I can help figure that out faster, even if it's not here, I'm happy to do it. I really appreciate your time and have a great day. Thanks.